Welcome, welcome, Soul Tribe. Today, entering Leo season in Western astrology. So, July 22nd, all the way to August 21st, 2024. So, every zodiac season is going to be a little bit different. So, this is for Leo season. Hi, everyone. I'm going to share with you some um, of the tarot cards that are associated with the season. So you start activating your own oracle. You know, a lot of the people that I attract um, for services, I can feel that they have already a connection to knowing astrology, knowing tarot. Some of you just starting to play with tarot, you are reactivating your remembrance of astrology, of reading the stars and being able to navigate your own journey. So Leo season, obviously the sun's energy, that's... Um, very much associated with where we have the sun. So for the season, we're focusing on the sun and Leo card. So right away, we're seeing here a lot of yellow, a lot of joy. This is also associated to the fifth house. So your self-expression, your creativity, your joy, your pleasure, okay, is going to be of the essence in the season of Leo. Now, some of you, if you want to research, there is a wheel where you can look at the correlation of astrology and tarot. And it will show you there are three cards, the minor arcanas, that are associated to each zodiac sign. And in this case, we have for Leo, through that period of time, the five of wands, the Six of Wands, and the Seven of Wands. So those are the teachings, okay, and the energies that we might be experiencing through Leo season. And what's interesting, if you notice, this is the Wands, which is fire element. This is all about what drives you, okay? So what drives us here, this is the Five is more of an inner conflict versus here there's more outer hi melissa and here we see someone in the middle that is highly balanced so the teachings here when i was like tapping into explaining to you how leo season wants to help us ascend spiritually what are the lessons and insight of self-mastery it is a lot about heart mind coherence about how we um, deal with our own inner world and outer and how we stay stable you see how this person is in the center it's like glorious <laughs> okay so this is the energy of um, the tarot for the dates of Leo season. And this is exactly what Leo as a zodiac archetype helps us to understand. How do we stay centered in our actions? You know, as far as like, what type of fight are you going to fuel conflict? Because whatever you fight on the outside is a reflection of the inside and vice versa. So I actually, you guys, I actually brought you a lot of my little tools. <laughs> because I was like, okay, we're going to pull some cards about this energy. But I'm going to share with you already. What do I use as far as keeping myself in balance between my heart and my mind. Because when you do this, when you have a good cohesion and coherence, you will become what is said to be a seer. This is how you foresee. You have foresight of the events because you're connected to your magnetic field emanating from the heart 
and your mind, the electrical field, will receive the information that is expanded from the magnetic field, which is much larger, much greater than the electric one. And that means this is why sometimes our mind cannot figure out some of the solutions that we're looking for to manifest things we haven't manifested yet. If you're trying to manifest a certain amount of money, I saw someone was asking about their business. If you're trying to manifest a certain um, outcome with your business and you haven't reached that goal just yet, your mind is not going to be the one giving you that answer. It's going to be the surrendering of what is so you can nurture the feeling of what the desire brings you and then the guidance. Hey, maybe I should do this. May, maybe I should do that. Maybe I should start a blog uh, to, um, you know, talk about this and that. Me, you know, you will start having insights. Okay. So one of the tricks, and I've been doing this a lot lately. So I, a lot of the things that I'm being called to do is because I'm going to be sharing some of those guidance uh, with others. I've been using I'm a little mystical, okay? Uh, uh, esoterical, <laughs> if you do not know. Um, I've been using my Egyptian rods, okay? This is one with zinc and this is one with copper. I have one that also is with shungite instead of zinc and a soapstone, um, but it is back east. I'm west right now, okay? Um, and this is something, you can look it up. It's called Egyptian rods. And why I love to meditate with those. I like to put my thumbs here and hold them and I meditate. Um, what it does, it helps you rebalance some of the energies of minus and plus, positive, negative, yin, yang in your field with more ease. Okay. Now, if I wanted to work with the energy of the season, what I would do is I would listen to the sun frequency. Some of you, you know, this is something that I do as part of my whole panel and channel of esoteric um, tools and knowledge that I share is that I create frequencies that can help you with your own receptivity of your guidance, okay? So what I would do is I've, I've been sleeping, first getting into bed, sleeping with these, with whatever frequency feels in alignment for me. And then I've been sleeping with those rods on the side, on, under my pillow. The amount of dreams that have been coming through and that I can remember, I currently have in my personal chart the collective south node that is activating my Pluto, my natal Pluto. So there's a lot of power teachings from my past lives that are coming up through my subconscious. Okay, so some of you, if you start understanding a little bit about astrology, those are things with the transit, the cosmic dance that will be pulled out. And I was like, last night I had a very intense dream and I was like, oh, I, I, I see this pattern. And I know I don't have the full spectrum of understanding, but I'm open to whatever is that receptivity. So this is something that if you're interested, I have a link available for this version or Shungite and Soapstone. I have both. I only recommend things that I already have myself and use. And this is really cool. So you can find this in my bio link. I purchased this uh, through Amazon. Another thing that I can help you with, because some of you, you might be very, um, very insightful, but more from doing and touching things, okay? Not just meditating, but you can receive more through uh, the action, through your hands. There's a lot of energy through our body. I love to use my selenite plate. This is something that I love in terms of recalibration of my give and take, of my doing and my being. So if you don't know, your left hand connected to your right side of the brain, okay, is the creative one. So this is going to be your left hand, your yin energy. 
I'm originally from France, you guys. I'm in the States. Hi, Linda. On your right side, you have your hand that's connected to the left side of your brain, which is more rational, logic. Okay, this one is going to give, this one is going to receive. By the way, if your grandmother, I never shared with you, when you have itchy palms, okay, if you start itching on the right, you're going to be giving money. If you are itching on the left, you're going to be receiving money, okay? I've been like lately activating a lot of my hand chakra and I would have like literally both palms just like red, just shooting out energy. And this is when you're letting a lot of your kundalini, your chi, your life force open up, open up for this exchange, open up for those opportunities to give to others and also receive. Okay, so this is, this is something that you can do. I like to rebalance with putting one of my, my hands. So this is the giving hand. And then I would do this mudra and put it to my heart. And I would just listen to whatever frequency. Or I would just stay in silence. And I would just, you know, rebalance my giving hand. Rebalance in accordance to my heart. So some of you, if you are empath and you're overgivers. That's a great thing you can do. <laughs> okay. And again, everything that I share is things that I had to figure out because I needed this. I really, truly needed this as someone that is highly empathetic. Okay. And became a super empath. That is actually something that you can find also. I, I feel called to share this with whoever is watching right now and who will be watching this. Um... If you are a super empath and you're struggling with give and take, uh, I have a um, I have a playlist called the Super Empath series. It's six six um, frequencies, and it helps with if you experience um, relationship with narcissistic dynamics. It it helps you staying true to yourself. It helps you dissolve certain entanglement with others, and this is all energetic, especially when you're an empath, uh, your logic, you know, it's like, I know I should be doing this, it, it doesn't really help, you have to feel it, okay, and this is why I'm sharing things that you can feel, now, if you are also someone that struggles with receiving, my receiving hand, connected to my heart, and that helps a lot with for me, energetically, you'll tell me if you if you try this, please let me know in my DMs, my comments. Okay, um, it helps me allow myself to nurture self love. It's like it shows you the connection energetically, how to receive and how to accept those those blessings. So I wanted to share all this because Leo season being so much around your joy, your self expression. And showing you that the only way for you to stand tall in your truth and feeling victorious, some of you, you start mentioning about your business. Your business is, an, a, it's alive. It's an entity in itself that wants to be nourished, that wants to have conversations with you. Hi, Nighthawk. Ken, right? <laughs> I think. <laughs> Um, so when you start having those relationships with, you know, extensions of yourself, you're going to really start um, finding solutions of exp expressing yourself very uniquely, very uniquely. Now, I don't know for who this is, but I'm hearing, you know, in the fifth house energy with uh, Leo, we have also everything that has to do with pleasure. <laughs> um and that means that we will have to face some of those old formats of no pain, no gain. You know, all the things that are based on like uh, avoiding painful situations and meaning that sometimes we're not taking risks because we're scared more of failure. So it's we're trying to avoid pain more over being led by the joy and delight and pleasure of our desires. And that's going to be something um, that can come up through this season. So again, July 22nd, all the way to August 21st. 
Now, we do have some cards. I feel called to um, pull the mermaids and the fairies so, uh, to kind of show some of the emotional patterns that can... <laughs> that can come up. By the way, I'm very expressive, if you haven't noticed, of my face. <laughs> <laughs> this is the French in me. We're going to say, what a flight. Heaviness lifts, burdens are cast away, and weightlessness. This is beautiful. You know what? You know what it gives me as an insight? I'm going to share this, you guys. I'm going to share this. This is an exclusive that I created last zodiac season with people that meditate with me and it's called solfagio weaving i'm working with 963 639 396 in this whole frequency i'm weaving everything so you can connect all your chakras back to your heart and harmonize and create inner peace when i i see see and say this because one of my YouTube members, this is a YouTube exclusive, she shared this morning, oh my God, this felt, the frequency felt as if a rock was lifted off her heart. And this made me feel so happy because you don't want to go about your life with that heaviness on your heart because remember, your heart emits the strongest signal it creates all those energy doors that are opportunities for you to thrive, okay? So I'm going to be sharing this for the next uh, three days, okay? Three days, I'm going to be, so until Wednesday, I'm going to be sharing this, this frequency. I will be publishing this in the stories and if you haven't subscribed just yet to my YouTube uh, channel, that, that, that is where I devote a lot of my uh, knowledge about sound engineer. I went to college for music. I've been a professional musician for many years, and that's all I was doing at some point. Um, and then look at me. <laughs> I can't wear a mat. But I'm still using my music just more for spiritual um, support. Now, we also have oh, I love this. <laughs> dreams, vivid dreaming, dream messages, dream teaching. I shared with you that I've been using my little rods, rods, Egyptian rods. I'm very much connected to, you know, all the Egyptian god and goddesses energy. I have Middle Eastern uh, background, if you don't see that, <laughs> okay, um, and I've been having very vivid dreams using this before going to bed, um, and I can, I can sense this is past lives, and this is past knowledge, this is also relating to what I have going on with my personal chart, but what I'm seeing is that for some of you, yes, okay, some of you are having lots of vivid dreams, I would suggest the solfagio weaving. Yes, me too. They were very lucid. Like I kept on knowing I was dreaming, and there was there was a lot that 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 just made me feel uh, very present. <laughs> All right. So let's see what else we have with this energy. So through Leo season, we're going to be working on uplifting. Our hearts, and what I mean is removing any heaviness that could be in the way of us materializing our dreams. I love those those colors; they feel very astral. <laughs> okay, and what else do we have? Oh, Sophia. And for some of you, if you want, you know, to join the YouTube membership, um, this is where I share a lot of my higher calibration frequencies that means i use more and deeper uh sound engineering so if you're getting good results with that um that's something you might want to try now look at this you guys stardust this is about premonition galactic communication beginnings and endings this feels 
freaking amazing. Do you feel this? Like, do you feel this? This whole Leo season is going to remember what I said about the zodiac archetype. Each zodiac archetype, they have a certain light work. Like, what do they rehearse as a practice, as a light worker, okay? Or shadow, okay? And here, this is the archetype of the seer. That means, like, having a great heart, mind, coherence that opens up communication to an extent that some of you, you yeah, you're going to see, you're going to really connect with your own stars, with your own connection to the stars. You're going to be able to uplift that heaviness from your heart. A lot is being achieved through the dream state, the dreamscape. Yeah, I do. Re <laughs> I relate a lot to the fairies as well. Okay, so this is what I feel here. Does anyone feel that they want, they have a particular question? Oh, you know what I want to do, you guys? If you have a question, let me know. But I do want to offer a little bit of attunement. This is something that I use a lot in my meditation temple. Um, we're going to activate the heart with the third eye. The zodiac archetype leo when you're working <laughs> thank you Shanae, when you're working with the kundalini when you're working with your connection to the stars your cosmic energy the life force that connects you back to source leo connected to the sun is actually the front of your third eye some of you you know this is why i do the cosmic weather forecasts around the moon cycles, okay, because we are through the sun and the moon and that dance, we are unveiling, unveiling the veil of illusion and remembering more and more our purpose. So queens, I will pull some a card for you. Um, let's first give us a little bit of attunement from the heart and to the third eye. Okay, so first what you want to do, inhale and exhale. Inhale and exhale. So some of you, if you're looking for answers, how do I connect back to my purpose? Focus on your heart, focus on your third eye, and make sure that this balance feels open. Inhale. And exhale. Yes, this is very intense. The tuning forks, they move a lot. By the way, you will be needing to hydrate, even listening to this for a few seconds. Because you're uplifting your cellular molecular water is going to release anything that is off this vibration. Inhale and exhale. You know, this is something that always makes me smile, that I love doing this, because as a child, when I was in school, I was given as an instrument for the uh, group orchestra of the class, the triangle. <laughs> so I used to do this already. <laughs> Okay, thank you so much. All right, I'm confused what to do in current situation. Okay, so we had someone about their purpose. I feel I want to pull a card. Whoop. So your purpose. Okay, interesting. The person that asked for their purpose, you see this? Letting go. Fairy tales, letting go, detachment, moving on. You're... Until you let go of a certain emotional pattern, it's going to be hard for you to find that purpose. And I'll tell you, 
you could be doing the exact thing that is part of your purpose, but if you're rehearsing an emotional beliefs that is telling you, this is not my purpose, this is not my purpose, this is not my purpose, you know, kind of like, I don't find the salt, I don't find the salt. It could be staring at you that you wouldn't find the salt. So I feel that there's something here. What I would recommend for you, I have in my YouTube channel a frequency called Surrender is the Portal. Okay. Now, for someone that was mentioning about their confusion. Okay. I feel this is more in the water mermaid element. Okay. Interesting. Sacred ocean medicine, clutter and declutter and choice. Ah, this is so interesting, okay? Some people don't realize that sometimes our minds can be confused. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> Instagram was asking me if I wanted to take a break. All right. Um, hmm. That might be for you, my dear. Okay, taking a break. You, your mind can feel confused because you're emotionally picking up on the surrounding that you're in. And that means that if your bedroom is misorganized, if you have a closet that is full of clothes that you need to donate, uh, things like that. It might, especially if you're a strong empath, it might affect you to the point of confusion. And you're like, I don't get it. Why am I confused? This is what I'm picking up for you as far as the guidance. And I would say there's no frequency for that. <laughs> it's just, uh, I would say for frequency, listen to your favorite tunes and start cleaning up. Okay. Now let me see everyone's little chat chat. Okay, thank you, Christopher. I'll take a card too. Yes, Ken, I felt you. I felt you, my friend. All right. You might get two. Ooh, yes. Oh, interesting. All right, so you have the little boy blue. Dreams come true. Return of the soul. Love this energy. This is about what I feel for you is that I want to invite you to start daydream more okay start daydreaming more about the things that you would feel are would be cool to experience okay <laughs> i definitely hear the cleaning in my room now what's interesting for you ken is that this car wanted to come forward and i this is the dragon's pet and i feel that uh you're welcome quincy it that's that's a sign that a lot of your visualization or your dream that you're going to start putting out there, you're going to receive confirmation that you're in alignment with this through animals, animal spirit. Okay, so animal spirit guidance, I would say for you. You're welcome, Kashi. I know I have a couple of people and then I'm sorry, I'm going to have to get going. Imperial XXY on what to do to let go of survival mode. Mm. Okay, secret doorway. Working with intuition, second sight opening, dimensional doorways. You know what's interesting is that what I feel is that I want you to pay attention to the small details. You know, she's too big to go through that door, okay? But she has to, she, she's curious about there. It's almost like when you start paying attention to the small details, when we're in survival mode, what happens? I, I say that's like being like a, a chicken without a head. Your, your focus is always out and kind of like looking for ways to hold on to certain things. And again, this is no judgment here because been there, done that many decades. Okay. Um, but I know my way, how I got out of it was actually to be able to get a hold of my focus and be more, just a little bit like Ken had um, a guidance about the pets, being more into admiration of the small details. Okay, like for example, you're getting a series of, of numbers, so 111 that appears, 
A, the universe is talking to you. So it starts like pulling you out of the emergency and more like receptive to the universe showing you, I got your back, okay? Energetically, let me see for you, my dear Imperial, um, what frequency? You know what I feel? I'm not, I'm not, I'm not going to even pull because um, I'm going to advise to you to look at my YouTube channel. There's a playlist for the 12 organs. Those 12 organs, they play a symphony, okay, in your, in your body. The order of that playlist, it's very relaxing. Just play it in the order of the playlist. It builds up your chi. And when it builds up your chi, it's going to build up a lot of the feminine, nurturing, creative energy. It's going to give you back a little bit of sense of power with your own creation instead of feeling like you're at the mercy of other people's creation. Okay? That's what I have for you. Linda! Okay, and after that, you guys, I have to go. I'm sorry. I, I'm sure there were some other people. Um, but I got stuff to do. <laughs> Linda, reflection. What you contemplate can actualize. This is my card for the mirror exercise. Okay, so I don't know what situation. Let me see what situation. Okay, there's a golden gift. Magical help is on the way, okay? It seems that there may be something that you're trying to reach and actualize, and it's saying, like, let the desire inspire you. Let the desire pull you in. When you do this, you start becoming more the embodiment of that desire. And the way that I can illustrate this, it's almost like, um, for example, you're wanting to have your own home. And you're wanting to have a garden and you're wanting to have pets. And imagine you have none of this. The question is, that's the desire. That's not your, your current situation. How would you live in that version? With the house, with the pets, with the environment. How would you go about your day? Rehearse that version of yourself. If you would be starting to be more caring about your plants because you have a garden, then buy a little small plant in your home and start nurturing as if it was a whole entire garden. Um, you know, if you were, imagine that you had a house or a big kitchen, you know, and you would say, oh, I would be cooking more homemade meals, then do that. Don't wait for the big kitchen. Make those things happen before because then whatever seemed to be blocking you is going to really open. It's almost like this is what I call the mirror. It's like what in here it's more your desire. What is your desire mirroring to you that wants to be emulated? What are you supposed to express in that sense? Okay, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. You're so welcome. Okay, and I'm sure all those messages are going to be purposeful for whoever is going to uh, come about that. Thank you. All right, everyone. This is going to be posted on YouTube. And remember, I'm going to be sharing the solfagio weaving to support Leo seasons for the next three days. Um, so you can uplift that heaviness on your heart if that's something um, that could be blocking you. And some of you, you might not even realize it's there. <laughs> Bye. Thank <laughs> you.